along here. And I wrote this back in uh, the fall, and even after I shortened it, it, it still clocked in at 9 minutes and 45 seconds. <laughs> but the plan is to do half the song, and in March, I'll do the other half. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. So hold our breath. Yeah, we'll come back some more. Uh, you might start to think that I must have been smoking some legal marijuana when I wrote this, uh, but I assure you that was not the case. It wasn't legal. It wasn't legal. It was, well, <laughs> uh, but uh, I guess the, the gist of it is uh, it's kind of a love song, but that's, that's really a stretch here. But the message is uh, you never know what you're going to run into when you're hiking in the wilderness. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> one day in late December, one day in late September, I was stretching across the land, heading for a mountain, trekking poles and hand, a belt to keep the bears away, and just in case some pepper spray, basking in the solitude I sought, walking all alone, or so I thought. <laughs> then a voice behind me said, tell me what's your sign? Do you come here often, your place or mine? I turned around and got a scare, an eight-point whoppity was standing there. He said, I have had my eye on you. My name is Lawrence Elk. How do you do? I couldn't move a muscle, be frozen to the ground. He ambled over, sniffed me up and down. He said, I really like your belt. I'm taken by the way you smell. Do you think that it would be all right for you to come and stay with me tonight? <laughs> I wasn't comprehending just what was going on. Why did this creature want me? Why was he so drawn? It dawned on me what was the reason. It's the start of rutting season. This is when the elk are very active. And that is why he found me so attractive. It could happen. I said I'm really flattered. You want me as your flame. But what really mattered, I didn't feel the same. I'm sure you're a great elk, but can we just be friends? I'm saying I'm just not that kind of guy. Then he said it looks like I'm doing this so wrong. And I am feeling foolish for coming on so strong. I read a book about all kinds of 1960s pickup lines. I guess this means we'll have to say goodbye. And then a little tear fell from his eye. It wasn't my intention to go and break his heart. So I said to Lawrence, we don't have to part. I'm going up to climb that peak. Look over there across the creek. It's bound to be a very pretty hike. You can come along if you would like. Then he made an offer to take my heavy pack. What a welcome gesture to get it off my back. His antlers made some handy holders, held my pack atop his shoulders. Then I started hiking up the canyon with Lawrence Elk, my newfound companion. <laughs> we headed for the mountain, walking side by side. I could barely keep up 
with his mighty stride. We talked about all kinds of things amid the colors autumn brings. We made it to the top with much elation. He bugled joyfully. Or something like that in celebration. <laughs> Just amazing, we could see for miles. The sun was shining brightly, we were both all smiles. Lawrence said, I love to live here. Wilderness has much to give here, wandering beneath the western skies, among the aspen trees and mountain highs. <laughs> called out, said, Mister, step aside, you're standing in between my gun and that elk hide. I quickly grabbed my pepper spray, it's good from 30 feet away, I popped the safety off. And if you want to hear the rest of the story, come back in March.